Welcome to Chapter 9. In Chapter 6, which goes up to early 2011, my medical illness had barely started, that too, in the strangest hospital. In Chapters 7 and 8, I digressed from my partial autobiography to narrate the story of another person, Regent Exeter of the UK, who succumbed to the above-stated unjust medical procedures on March 26, 2014, at 54 years. These two chapters narrated medical and non-medical forensic issues revolving around the unlawful termination of life. I received a spate of emails that made fun of Regent's death, these emails contained odd references to my family members. Now, email happens to be a non-medical item. According to my personal interpretation, the anonymous sender was non-medical. Not only that, but the first of the cruel emails arrived on the eve of Regent's death, when people close to him did not have a clue he was dying. For the above-stated reasons, the emails were a non-medical forensic evidence containing clues about Regent's unlawful death. Chapter 7 and 8 are not about me. They are about Regent Exeter. Chapter 8 ends where the lawyer I showed these emails to, who considered Regent to be his crony, told me to submit a sample of this non-medical evidence to the Utterford Superintendent of Police. The lawyer said. If the superintendent was not willing to investigate, there was no law in the land to investigate the matter. I muse that perhaps, in every country in the world, there are some murders that cannot be investigated, because there is no law in the land to investigate them. The office of the MP Mark Pritchard of Telford and Rican, where Regent had lived had volunteered, so Regent was killed by the authorities? Here, in Chapter 9, my narration of Chapter 6 has been resumed. You are now back to my partial autobiography, if I may please put it that way. In this chapter are some of my experiences of the time period 2011 to 2016. I have chosen to prioritize medical experiences and my emotions as they occurred.